Good evening to you all, and welcome to this reflection on Monday, Thursday, Thursday of Holy Week, April 1st, 2021. I'm Joe, the pastor at First Presbyterian Church here in Smithville, North Carolina, in the heart of Johnson County, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to be able to share this very special night with all of you. In the English-speaking world, um, in Christian tradition, and especially in Protestant churches, we often think of this as Holy Thursday, but an uh, expression that's come with liturgical renewal in the past several decades is the expression of Maundy Thursday, which has been used for centuries uh, in uh, the Roman Catholic Church and in other places. But Maundy comes from a Latin word, mandatum, and it refers to a mandate or a commandment. And Monday, Thursday is the night the great commandment was given. Now, tonight we will have a tenebrae service. We will share in the Lord's Supper. And we remember on this night that Jesus instituted and shared the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, with his disciples in the giving of bread and wine that embodied, literally, um, his body and blood for them to remember uh, as he went and prepared himself for crucifixion and he would leave them, that they could share in this meal to be reconciled to one another. But also on this night, he knelt and he took water and he washed their feet. And he did this as an act of service, an act of love to embody what they were to become if they would to be imitate him. And so the words he shared was, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And this is a very distinctive feature of our faith. Not that we should love one another or just simply do unto others as we would have them do unto you, but we love one another we do unto others as we would have them do unto us because God in Christ has loved us first. I've got a friend and classmate that during the challenges of this year that I've gotten to meet her through my doctor of ministry program and uh, my studies there. And she has a very unique ministry and that many of us do not have. Now, when we think of what it means to be a good disciple, we know we should feed the hungry, we should clothe the naked, we should give shelter where we can and when we can, we should give generously as we are able to others. But what are those small features of things we're asked to do in um, what is described in the New Testament is to visit the prisoner and to be present. And certainly for many Christians who were being in prison, that was an important commandment. So this classmate, this new friend uh, in my studies, uh, has a unique ministry that she goes into the dark labyrinth of the U.S. prison system in North Carolina and Virginia and to some degree Tennessee, and she visits those who are on death row. Her only calling, her only task, is not to assess what they had done in the past, but as an outward sign of the inward grace that God works through all of us is to be present to them. She goes to let them know of God's love. And as a pastor, she often turns to one particular psalm that doesn't usually appear in our lectionary readings. That's Psalm 88. Now, many of the other psalms we're familiar with, we know the Lord is my shepherd, or in Psalm 23, or Psalm 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. But Psalm 88 is a very different kind of psalm, whereas the other psalms, we may gripe and moan and complain, or we hear the voice of the psalmist saying, these are the things I'm suffering, and this is how I've been misunderstood or misjudged. But they usually conclude with God vindicating the individual or delivering or saving the person. But Psalm 88 is different. There's the cry, the loneliness, the isolation, the feeling of being forgotten. And at the end, there is no deliverance. 
it's a psalm of lament. So on this Holy Thursday, where we remember that Jesus was arrested, betrayed, denied by those who were closest to him, we hear in the garden these words crying out to God. Let us listen together. O Lord, God of my salvation, when at night I cry out in your presence, let my prayer come before you, incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to shale. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like those who have no help, like those forsaken among the dead like the slain that lie in the grave, like those you remember no more. For they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you overwhelm me with all your waves. You have caused my companions to shun me. You have made me a thing of horror to them. I am shut in so that I cannot escape. My eyes grow dim through sorrow. Every day I call on you, Lord. I spread out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Do the shades rise up to praise you? Is your steadfast love declared in the grave or your faithfulness in Abaddon? Are your wonders known in the darkness or your saving help? in the land of forgetfulness. But I, O Lord, cry out to you. In the morning my prayer comes before you, O Lord, why do you cast me off? Why do you hide your face from me? Wretched and close to death from my youth up, I suffer your terrors. I am desperate. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dread assaults, assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long. From all sides they close in on me. You have caused friend and neighbor to shun me. My companions are in darkness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On this night... We remember. We remember an innocent man is arrested and executed the very next day. Little better than a lynch mob of the powerful and the self-serving. The grief expressed in the garden by Jesus when he cries out to his father to remove this cup from him is echoed in the words of the psalm that we've shared tonight. Yet on this night, in the sharing of bread and wine, in the washing of feet, we are commanded to love. In the midst of grief and suffering, of darkness and forgetfulness, in our imprisonment, we remember that we are to love one another as God has already loved us in the gift of his son, Jesus. May the Holy Spirit bring us comfort tonight, the light of Christ illumine us. And in that light, may the love of Christ abide within us. And above all, may the peace of God be with you until we can be together again. Good night.